Welcome, Cossack. This is the end of the road for you. Right, my friends? Listen, they agree. Welcome to the Vulcan Raven boss guide. This shaman carries an M61 Vulcan cannon, not the typical weapon carried by a man. However, this weapon is not as scary as you may think. With the proper preparations, we will use his weapon against him and win the ear pull. The statistics for Raven are pretty straightforward. Depending on the strategy you use for easy or normal, your HP and rations will make a big difference. Snake's HP with the any percent route will be less on easy, normal, and hard, unless you decide to fight Wolf 2. Notice that on easy, you can finish the fight with a bullet if you do full explosive damage on all other attacks. In terms of strategies, there are two different methods. We can either tank the damage of his Gatling gun, or initiate a stun lock with the Nikita missile launcher. Tanking damage is only viable on easy and normal. It may not be the best approach depending on your HP, ration, and ammo situation. The stun lock approach can be applied on any difficulty and in any part of the warehouse, as long as we know how it works. By tanking damage, we can avoid picking up the Nikita in any percent. This strategy is arguably easier than the stun lock, as you just run at Raven and drop grenades at his feet. Not picking up the Nikita on any percent can save around 10 seconds, but requires careful planning of your resources to compensate. On all bosses, you don't gain much by using the tank strategy, but you will have more HP to work with. So what is this stun lock? According to the Englishman, during his invincibility frames, he cannot shoot true bullets. By standing around a corner, we can keep Raven in an alert state, firing his gun and taking missiles to the face. As long as he continues to face in the general direction of where Snake is firing the missile, we'll stay in the stun lock. It is important that the Nikita travel path doesn't change Raven's facing direction too much. If he faces too far away from the source of the missiles, in other words, Snake, the stun lock will be dropped. You can also drop the stun lock by not firing quickly enough or by missing your attack. As stated earlier, this stun lock can be applied anywhere in the warehouse. It is key to set up the stun lock in an L pattern, with Snake behind a corner and Raven on the other side. Just make sure that you are covered by the corner so Raven doesn't shoot you around it. If you do drop the stun lock, you can use stingers at Raven's back or set up another stun lock as a backup. Keep in mind, depending on whether you fight with lag, as on CD-ROM, or without lag on digital versions like PSTV, it will change the feel of this fight. If you want to practice the lagless fight on the EPSXE emulator, you can change the CPU overclock settings to 1.5 to approximate the feel of digital versions. Tactical reloading by tapping R1 can speed up your shots, allowing you to explode the missile earlier than if you let it fly into Raven. You can do so as early as the barrel of his gun going from skinny to fat. Be careful on the timing, as it is possible to explode the missile too early and hit Raven while he is still invincible. It depends on the distance between you and Raven, and when you tactical reload. The safest thing to do is wait until the missile contacts Raven before you tactical reload. Or, just mash square when the animation of the explosion is over. Even if you hit him during his iframes, the loop shouldn't drop as long as you fire again. You can pick up a ration in the northeast corner of the warehouse. You can also pick up a ration, C4, and Nikita missiles by the cargo elevator. Be careful not to hold X for too long when skipping the two cutscenes, or else you'll go prone and mess up your strategy. Lastly, you can set up your menu for after Raven during the fade to black from the final hit. Let's look across the difficulties for strategies. I will show images for where Raven starts and his path on each difficulty. 
As you can see, on easy, Raven can go down or right at the first junction, making it ideal to begin the loop when he moves into the intersection. Let's begin with Nikita approaches, starting with the one I recommend. Go to the top right corner of the box to your left. Time your shot for when Raven's cone intersects with the box, then fire. Begin the loop. Tapping R1 can speed up your shots, but be careful on the timing. We do not want to hit Raven too early while he is still in his iframes. The safest thing to do is to wait until the missiles make contact, then mash square to fire again. This approach is a slightly faster variant, but trickier. Again, using the timing of the cone intersecting with the box, we will get an earlier shot off on Raven, then loop him as he goes down. For the tank strategy, you will need at least 8 grenades or some combination of explosives. Equipping rations before entering the fight is a good idea if your HP is already low. Hold up left, square, and X at the start. Throw the grenades at this line for a full damage grenade. Then, continue to run at Raven, cooking a grenade that will be dropped at his feet when he shoots you. You do not want to prime the grenade the moment you stand up, or it can explode during iframes. If you do 7 full damage grenade throws, we can finish the fight with a bullet. On any percent, that can be the PSG-1 or the MP5 on very easy. On normal, Raven starts on the right side, moving down only to turn around. We can initiate the loop very quickly. Go to the bottom left corner of the box to your right, then fire a missile straight down. This will initiate the loop as Raven will shoot down that missile. Then, begin the loop. Due to the positioning, we can tactical reload earlier than on easy, but this is a small optimization. We can start the same approach with a grenade, throwing at the corner of the box. This complicates the start, but saves a few seconds. Alternatively, we can wait for Raven to walk back up. Wait until the comb moves to the right, then fire. I do not recommend this approach, only as a backup. However, it does save a Nikita missile compared to the fastest strategy. For the tank strategy on normal, the margin is tighter than on easy. Unlike easy, we will just run at Raven until he shoots us, rather than timing out a grenade throw. A partial damage grenade will not force us to drop more than the required amount, as long as the rest are full damage. Don't forget your rations. On hard, Raven starts directly above you arguably the most tricky starting position. Stand along the right side of the middle tile. Wait until Raven shoots, then fire straight up. A half damage shot will not affect the number of missiles we need. Fire the Nikita straight up until you see the missile clear the pipes like so. Then hold upright. Then finish the loop. You can also get behind Raven, firing straight up to initiate the loop, like on normal. Then begin the loop. You can choose to fire the Nikita from below the box you start at, but I find the timing awkward. 
fire when he shoots, get a partial damage shot, then begin looping him as he moves to the left. You can begin the same approach by tossing two grenades at Raven, though this doesn't save much time. It's just a different start. On Extreme, Raven is in the same spot as on Easy, but he won't decide to turn right, giving us more options. Raven will be running constantly, changing our timing. Be aware that a partial damage explosion will force us to fire another missile to compensate. Go to the bottom right corner of the box on your left. Wait for two blinks of the Nikita, or spin your missile around in mid-air to time your shot. Then, begin the loop. The faster approach means we need to meet Raven while he is running down. Try to get to the corner as quickly as you can, and fire as soon as possible. We can use the previous approach as a backup if things go wrong. Just make sure to move down quickly. Thank you for watching this tutorial. For more information on the Metal Gear Solid Speedrun, visit MetalGearSpeedrunners.com.